Hello and welcome to episode number 255 of Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I'm Patricia Steer, your host, and I've got some cats here that are sneaking through a door here. Hey, you guys. And I'm the other guy. <laughs> this is The Secret Show, and the other guy is Mark Sargent. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? We're doing great. Yeah. yeah. Lots to talk about. Busy, busy week, busy month, busy rest of the year. This oh, point yes. Exciting, exciting times. Um, I do yeah. want to say congratulations to Bob Nodell of the channel Globusters for doing a fantastic job on the CBS News story that was in print and video. Right. I'll try to remember to put a link in the description box if you haven't seen it already. Uh, he mentioned when, when he was asked um, about the training pools, the NASA training pools. And that, just dropping that little gem of information will give people who are watching thinking, flat earth, stupid, what the, what the heck? They'll look up the training pools and maybe one thing will lead to another and the next thing you know, they'll have a YouTube channel and they'll be making videos too. So yeah. good work, Bob. Uh, the thing about doing those um, you know, news interviews, and I know you've done a bunch of them, and I recently did a CBS one. Well, I mean, it recently aired, but it was done back over the summer. They talk to you for a very, very, very long time. And what they take from the conversation is always very interesting. Right. Um, so, but anyway, it was a great article. And it also showed the billboard, the the new billboard that's been unveiled that's in, that's in Denver, getting ready for the conference coming up in almost mere days, next month, actually, in November uh, 2018. Just, just a hair under three weeks. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, I'm getting messages on my Facebook and on Skype with people saying, what should I wear? I guess I'm the one to ask for what should I wear? Um, and, you know, it's just more excitement building for this than, than for Raleigh. And I'm not really sure why other than we've done it before and people are kind of used to it. Right. Or just because Denver is such a hotbed for flat earthers. What do you think? A little of both. As you know, there are a number of higher profile Flat Earth channels that started in Flat Earth. I myself was in Boulder, Colorado for That's 20 true. years. I wrote the clues in Colorado. So yeah, that is a little weird. And Denver was also the first mainstream media story to break it out you know, when the Denver Post ran us on the front page. And that was that was very, very exciting. So as far as the conference goes, yeah, one, there's going to be a lot more media there because this time it's not a joke. <laughs> it never was before, but a lot of people thought. So. Yeah, yeah. It's like, no, they can't be serious. And all of a sudden you had these people show up. So they only sent probing teams in the beginning. And then, of course, you know, there were some bigger follow ups. But there were some countries that that were committed. You know, there were a number of people from the BBC and France and Germany and Australia that came in for this. And it's so, and in fact, after Bob released his thing, uh, the other networks followed suit. So all the Denver affiliates, NBC, ABC, Fox, uh, they're all aware, and CBS, are all aware of what's gonna happen and they will be there in force. The Denver team that covered Bob in the article and in the uh, video that, like I said, I'll link in the description box if you haven't seen it already, did a right. pretty fair job. Uh, they didn't belittle any flat earthers. They didn't put clown music behind when Bob was talking. They right. didn't um, They didn't say anything mocking. They didn't say disc flying through space or anything that none of us ever say, but they right. news people always throw in there. Well, par part of that also is political, meaning you don't want to. Like, the main event is coming. You do not. <laughs> <laughs> want to piss everybody off beforehand you just don't because that gets you access in so and i would th i would imagine the other networks followed suit which was oh yeah we want to be there now will they you know will they be unkind after they're there we'll see but i think we'll put our our best game face on and and impress them well we always whenever we do events we all involve do our best to be media ready media savvy but you know, anything that you say can and will be used against you. Just like if somebody dislikes you and watch a YouTube watches a YouTube video of yours, they can take portions of what you say and kind of spin it, even if it's exactly your words, and make it into something you didn't really say or right. make it into something that you might have inferred that you didn't. It's all about the editing. So, Other, otherwise you know. known as out of context, kids. Exactly. <laughs> so... You know, the fact that Bob came through uh, so in a, such a stellar fashion in that is um, a testament to the fact that 
um, he's doing things for the right reason. And right. also the people in Denver were doing their job reporting on something as opposed to doing an opinion piece. Yeah. And, ma and mainstream have to chop it up because they have time constraints. I mean, Bob's piece was a couple minutes. Uh, the piece that was with you was seven or eight minutes. Yeah, it was an hour and a half I spoke with them. So. Yeah, Rob Skiba was interviewed for 40 minutes and they used it less than five. Mm. Uh, but but the independent ones, they can talk, they will use a lot of it. That's why I love audio interviews and uh, transcripts because you know they will use the whole thing. After this show, I'm doing a thing with NYU and then tomorrow I'm doing a thing for a uh, one of the Seattle regional papers. So, you know, it's all helps. It's all a good thing. So if you go there, you don't have to talk to the media. There's going to be a lot of them floating around. And honestly, you're not going to be able to tell between regular media and documentary teams, kind of like last year where they're just kind of all over the place. So just, you know, be yourself. And try, my, my only re recommendation is stick to Flat Earth. That's really the only direction I would I would ever kind of push people in. Because. I agree with that. Whenever I'm doing a Flat Earth um conference or speaking to media at a flat earth conference. I don't talk about one of my other passions, which is veganism. That right. doesn't mean that I am not vegan anymore. Or I don't, that's not my thing. Right. It's just that um, for the media, they don't understand nuances. Uh, well, let me, let me clarify this just a little bit. You see flat earth is still so new to them that it puts them on their heels. Whereas every other conspiracy, they've got a more or less an idea of it. So now if they ask you about it, sure, fine, great. Uh, just don't offer it up to them. Don't right. say blah, 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 and 9-11. Let me tell you what I think. Right. And, and that doesn't mean that that we are discouraging people from being themselves, not at oh, all. It's no, just no, that no. I edit myself when it comes to those things. Although on my own channel, I occasionally mention veganism um, because it's my own channel. I can do what I want. It's just if it's getting out to the real mainstream public who's never heard of Flat Earth at all, throwing lots of other stuff on top of that will make people think perhaps that all Flat Earthers believe Are, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. It, it muddies the waters and it creates, and as we all know, the mainstream media, they will dig in their heels on those other topics. Absolutely. You know, they, they get defensive. Uh, I luckily they didn't use most of my stuff and I was very careful when I was talking to ABC last year but when she was saying that now she asked the question to me about the you know that I don't think I kind of let it slip that I didn't believe that we are actually enemies with Russia you know and I don't I still don't it's like look I agree they're our secret allies and she <laughs> and even the mainstream makes us believe that they're up on the ISS together so that doesn't even right. make any sense you know right right so Anyway, just just have fun with it. There will be lots of people poking around, looking for people to interview. I mean, there's going to be no shortage of cameras flying around. So just be yourself. If you are yourself and then, you know, they ask you some questions about other things that you might believe in, I guess you have to use your own judgment. And um, you could start talking about chemtrails. You could start talking about vaccines. You could start talking about veganism or, hey, the carnivore diet, if that's your thing right, or right, right. whatever it may be, or Hitler, um, the Holocaust. Uh, these are things that if you want to speak of, of course, I'm not going to discourage you. I'm just going to say they might take what you say and forget about the entire flat earth story and make the whole story about all flat earthers believe blah 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 exactly exactly and they the media in general i i, I don't want to say they're lazy because humans in general are lazy aren't we all right? right they will take the easiest route from point a to point b and if a story writes itself about a particular topic like can you believe it they're flat earthers and they also think hitler was a good guy right they'll They'll eat that up. They'll go right there and paint us all with that brush. And I'm not saying that I, my beliefs on Hitler, I mean, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, l let me end it with this. Or, uh, or if you say something like everything's a lie. I mean, I kind of think everything is a lie, but it may make the mainstream media who's not used to the way we think, think, right. oh my God, these people are absolutely absolutely certifiable the, the media runs with anything they can and the more sensational the better i mean how much traction did those two guys get that said that australia didn't exist oh i don't even know about that story i thought it started as a facebook joke 
No, no, there's two guys out there uh, that I know of that actually believe this. No, we don't really we don't know them. They're not in any circles that we know or even the extended circles of our circles. But the point is, is once somebody reports on it, as you know, the media is as lazy as anybody else. Giant cat attack. Giant Rory. Alert. <laughs> All right, get the tail out of there. Get him off the stage. Uh, the um, once once the media once some one media piece grabs on it if it gets any traction at all if they think it's somewhat interesting oh yeah they all grab it mm -hmm. so whatever just be yourself but be careful <laughs> just watch yourself don't get don't get in a trap don't get in a corner yes. i just avoided as many negative topics as i could I'll, I'll tell you what i told the the nat geo guys which was because uh, they were asking you know they said look we talked to a lot of flat earthers and they believe in this and this and this and this i go great Fantastic. I believe in flat earth. Flat earth is what I do. That is my main thing. Everything else was below it. Everything else is second and third shelf. I don't focus on it. I can only try to you know, lead by example. And you know, if, if anyone has other, and of course, we all know this because we all come from the conspiracy world, right? Everybody's got their, in fact, my top 20 is probably different from your top 20, which is different from all the other people. But my number one, always going to be until I die now is flat earth. Unless you don't die, and that'll go to number one. Well, there is that. Yeah, because it, if I don't, if I don't die in a vacuum chamber, yeah. Well, energy can never uh, go away, and we are energy. So wow. maybe we're recycled. Maybe we are. Um, maybe we are. We just go somewhere else and become something else. So maybe that's a bigger that's conspiracy pretty philosophical. than philosophical. Are you reading more lately? What's happening? <laughs> no, here? I do all the time. But what I'm saying is, is that. Maybe there are bigger things than flat Earth um, that are more on that level. Oh, sure, 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 sure. But I haven't seen them yet. Well, that's one of those that you won't see until you die. So, right. <laughs> as far as I know, no right. one gets out alive. No one comes back to tell the tale, which isn't true. We hear of people with those near-death experiences, but you know, how do you how do you verify any of that? Right. I don't know. Uh, by the way, yes, I will be uh, wearing this hat for... Burning that hat? I mean, wearing that hat? <gasps> yeah, I know, fashion sense. You are um, you only get to see it for another three episodes, and then it is going to be given away at the conference to some lucky fan. There's a person who said that she wanted it, and I don't know if she's in our live chat today. Her but... name's not Winter, is it? No. Fall? No. Spring? Uh, I'm out of ideas. <laughs> Well, anyway, this particular person has expressed the, a desire, and that was about a month ago. So if they are at the conference, you will give this to them. I'll make sure of it. But if not, then it goes to this. Her. This hat designed by Chris Pontius, uh, mm. let's, let's do the endorsements, right? Yes. Uh, is, um, is powered by a little cool little USB phone charger. Very nice. Chris yeah. so, so if you destroy the hat, you still have, look at this little dangly here, you still have a phone charger that you can use and you know, keep around with you in case you use your phone a whole bunch. I'm not going to say that anyone carries around giant phone chargers with them, but. I do. When I travel. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you have the biggest phone charger I've ever seen. It's a battery it's backup. Bigger than the phone. It's a battery backup. And I lost it, so. And how long does, how much battery do you, I mean, look at this thing, right? This thing's supposed to give you like four. How many hours does yours give you? Like I don't really remember. Week? It's gone now, so. Why? What happened? Lost it. Did you really <laughs> lose it? Yes, I really did. Or did you trade it for drugs? Oh, gosh, don't give away my secret. <laughs> <laughs> this is a high-end phone charger. <laughs> and you're going to give me a dime bag, and then you like slap them. <laughs> I want to go into the live chat as our as our show continues to circle the drain and say hello to everyone. <laughs> Flat out elected. Hi. Uh, he says that Bro Sanchez is pushing a feminist agenda, just like the mainstream worldview is. I really don't know. I have no idea what Bro Sanchez is up to. He might be talking about the divine feminine, which is a belief, and people can believe whatever they want. But I, hey, Rand, thanks for being here. Yeah, I'm trying to stay out of that whole feminist <laughs> thing and the gender fluid argument i'm trying to stay out of that one as well i mean you know i always say to myself well men are men and women are women and i think it's weird to try to change what you are and also i'm not a big fan of feminism i just am a fan of personism like, oh well, you know i'm saying it, it, it won't matter <laughs> because people. because the with the racism i think we all should just be treat, treat each other equally um but what would you do 
What would you do, do, do? That's an echo. Wow. Oh. <laughs> that's that's some outstanding special effects. I know. Someone call the production team. Only the best. Nominated um, for an Emmy. What if you had a child? Right. And your child expressed at a very young age, not due to anything you did or media that you showed them or their friends. Right. Because you brought them up in the way that most truth seekers would say was a, a cool way. I mean, you the woman breastfed. It wasn't by a C-section. There wasn't a lot of television or McDonald's or, you know, it was just really good childhood. And right. what if that young person started saying, Mom, Dad, I don't feel like I'm uh, oh, a man or I mean a boy or a girl, and they really are one? Or what if they told you that you were gay? Now, that's the thing. And because that does happen to some people, that's why I reserve my judgment about people who are believing that they are really a woman inside and they're a man or whatever, right, right, because right, right. I can't, I don't know what that's like. I don't know what that's like. So I can't judge. It's too cruel to judge. Um, for others, feel free to judge. That's your thing. It's just not my thing. I am not encouraging it or condoning it. I'm just saying, I don't know what it's like to have that experience or to have a child who has having that experience. Imagine your own child, innocent, that you gave birth to or that you fathered comes to you with a heartfelt emotion about their gender. What do you do? Do you tell them you talk them out of it? I mean, what do you do? You can't, you can't talk them out of it. I mean, I, I, man, I'm you know glad what? I don't you know what? You know what? I do not. Well, let's say, tell you what. This this particular issue, I don't think we should probably because I, I know everyone's got a different opinion, and you're free to have it. I'm not yeah, I'm judging like, you for having me. Oh, God's but, children! I'm not judging. Yeah. I'm, I'm just, just saying personally, I'm not going to slam anybody for any of those things. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not going to slam them. I know you won't either, of course. Uh, I. I Oh, I can't, I can't touch it. Sorry. I can't, I can't, can't touch this. I can't. <laughs> da, 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 da. Yep. Can't do it. Yeah. Sorry. It's uh, there's too, there's too many things that would take too long. The and world isn't the way we wish it was sometimes. And we have to just learn how to deal with that. The world is getting weirder and weirder as we speak. And I mean, we saw the thing that started happening this morning, not to go into current events, but mm, what happened this morning? I kind of well, lost the, track. the bombs that they that were mailed to all the politicians. I have no idea about this. And, and that's this, I'm pretty happy about that this morning? because I don't pay oh, attention I know to mainstream you're doing. for the most part. And I had uh, stuff to do with my car and blah, 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 right. you know, little those governmental rules and regulations sorts of things, you know. Whatever. Yeah, that's what you want to say. You realize that could be taken a whole other way. Oh, okay. So I had to get my vehicle inspected at the end of the month and, you know, one of those sorts of things. Everyone has to do that in the state of Texas. They have to do it in California too, um, where they check for smog. Every state has its own rules, but I had to do that. It was kind of a drag. Let's just put it that way. And of course, I didn't watch any mainstream news while I was at it or even read anything about it. So tell us, bombs, what's up? Probably fake. Oh, I'm sorry. I was just distracted by the fact that you had to have your, your car regulated. And everybody knows that most agency service vehicles are domestic. <laughs> you know, they're Caprice, St. Regis, uh, they're Buicks from time to time, Fords. I don't have any of those cars. No, you have a Mercedes. <laughs> How that requisition went through beyond me. Uh, okay, so there were some uh, pipe bombs supposedly mailed to politicians and the CNN newsroom and like there's at least six and counting. And of course, they were immediately discovered and everybody knew about it once. None of them went off. Nobody was hurt. Were but... they real? That's that that is the excellent question. And that is, are we, ta are we talking about fake news? Oh, this yeah, very possibly. Thing. And in fact, does it does it? <laughs> And the fact that it's happening just before the elections. Yes. Is it, you know, now there's people saying, is it a left a sympathy plot? I smell something. Hmm. It's yeah. an agenda. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry. Nobody, nobody got hurt. Were they, I don't know, but, but the press were all over it. And the fact that you mailed it to, you know, to Hillary Clinton and Barack Obama and CNN, no right wingers were written to at all. And so, it, you know, it's like, Okay, so when when are you gonna pin this on some guy wearing a Make America Great Again hat or and a red, and a red t shirt, or a flat Earth shirt? Let's no, that no, that's not it's not the fun. Yeah, I, I for the briefest second, it's like, oh, please pin this on me, but they're not going to. So whatever.
but yeah, that was that. I mean, it's still going on right now. CNN is just lit up, and they had to evacuate the CNN offices because of a pipe bomb. And then other other business, other newspapers are shutting down. We should shut down too. We're you know who's who's in day, at risk again? Coincidence that they're all this is happening just before the election. Yeah, so. I mean, this has been going on since politics began well but this is new things this well, is, i don't mean particular pipe bombs but i mean this is always uh, things kind of heat up or or crank up right around election time and this, drama happens this is a this is a this is taken up a notch as far as drama goes well nobody it, died nobody got hurt therefore it's not that bad that's what i mean if you're gonna if you're going to make a real credible threat somebody's got someone take, somebody's got to take <laughs> yeah, do it. someone's got to take one for the team yeah. I'm not saying you have to die, You're but it's got it's to gotta go off in your office. Okay. Somebody, it's got to blow up somewhere. But if that happened, I might doubt that that was real. I think would think somebody blew something up to make it. A I, you'd think it was okay. It gives it a little more credibility than just saying, you know, it's like, oh, look, all these different pipe bombs. And nothing we, has credibility on mainstream media, except for any stories on flat earth. As far as I'm concerned, there is that. That have anyway, my so yeah, and, that, that's you know. the big that's the big thing as of this morning, which is in fact, if I go to CNN, hang on, let me punch it up real fast, and then we can segue into something else. Tell uh, me when you got F it. F oh, here we go. Yeah, here we go. So here we are, twelve hours later. FBI warns public to stay vigilant, and there's cops lining the streets. And keep New your York. head on a swivel, boys and girls. Here's a picture of the package. It was sent to uh, John some Brennick at. Time Warner, CNN, you know, and the thing is, we're talking a full blown old school pipe bomb. Daniel right? Leather in the live chat says, instead of running, reporters took pictures of the supposed bomb. Yeah, that these, wouldn't happen these, in the real world. These are pipe bombs that any dumb kid, by that I mean guy, used to make when they were growing up. Every every kid's, you know, you go to the hardware store because you can, you know, just buy a pipe and the small section and two end caps. And I mean, it's like, really? That's the sophistication here? And how exactly are they going off anyway? They, they were sent in manila envelopes. I mean, you could the weight of it alone would be so suspicious. Plus, you feel it. It feels like a, a pipe bomb or something else <laughs> interesting yeah well whatever i don't believe it that's all i can say it's yeah. well it's it, that's what they're it's drama that's that's the drama now will this affect the election in the slightest probably not will they try well, to tie the, it to... the election isn't even real nothing's real and that's the bottom line and that's where i feel very confident in what we are doing because even if we are the minority right um we found something that's real and we don't have any vested interest in talking about flat earth because it's not creating any fame for us or money for us or power for any of us in fact kind of the opposite we become infamous we become jokes to some people anyway right. we use our own money to do things so we're not making any money um you know power oh yeah right let me flex for you <laughs> i mean so uh we're doing this because we feel it's right the somebody asked me when i was out and we can talk about that in a bit doubt in um a reporter that was talking to me in arkansas and he said uh you know are you doing this you know for fame do you want to be famous and i was like no i don't want to be famous i want to be right right uh there's lots of famous people who are dead wrong mm. and that ends eventually eventually that that gets you know fleshed out the truth that's forever right i agree i mean so. i don't want to be right in that same way i just want to know that i'm doing the right thing right that's what's most important to me mm -hmm. and that's why through the time i've been in flat earth which started for me march 2015 thanks to seeing flat earth close mark thanks a lot um i've oftentimes thought why am i doing this you know i've I've created a lot of stress in my life and you know for a while i was getting attacked by random people you know not personally physically but you know online right and i was thinking you know i could just shut my channel down and walk away from all that because in my real life nobody ever says those things about me but i didn't because i couldn't because i know i'm doing the right thing yeah we all are yeah regardless of what we each contribute to this we are doing the right thing and yeah. Yeah, that's it.
find find me someone that that went down the flat earth path and said the opposite said no no this is wrong there's, there's something really you know morally and ethically ethically uh, questionable about it it's not you know everybody's gone down the path i mean look at uh the uk team the you know they're driving around in the caravan yeah yeah, and that's gonna you know wrap up here fairly soon, you know, before the conference. And it's what sort of dedicate, you know, what sort? Look at the motivation. That takes some serious enthusiasm, some serious conviction. Yes, to, to go that far, and they've done a, a bang up job. And that's just one group. There's so many people doing activism. So many people know in their heart that they they're on the right path, and they need to try to help other people get there too. Right. That's what keeps this thing going. It's not money or power or fame that keeps this thing going. Mm -hmm. However, on the other side of the spectrum, when we're talking about um, NASA and all the sort of space agency things and, and governmental control and all the things that we know that created this whole lie system right. that we're living in. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's all about money, power, and control. It's us against them. We know it. I'm not even thinking we're going to win because I don't know what winning means. Does winning mean society as we know it is destroyed and starts over from scratch or? Oh, don't, don't tease who, me. No, <laughs> who knows exactly. But just to me, a win is waking up one person. Right. And we do it one by one by one. And while doing it for me anyway, uh, being civil, being kind, those two things matter because you can wake people up by being a jerk. And that person may go on to wake other people up, but it spreads the jerkiness right. like a virus. And then we've got people who are trying to hurt other people, but still they're, they're truth seekers. So you can't really be completely mad at them. Uh, no, I mean, look, you know, my, my route, which is honey over vinegar. It's an old, old saying and that's for a you know, reason. You get more flies with, I know you're a vegan. You get more flies yeah. with honey than you do vinegar. I don't want to get flies. I'm not saying you're <laughs> killing the flies. I'm saying you will attract more flies with honey than vinegar. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. But you will attract with both. So, I mean, you remember the, uh, the story about the Oscars this year, the person that came into the Oscar party who was talking about flat earth, who we won't mention. Right. And she brought it up in a negative fashion. She used the vinegar tactic, which was, let me tell you what's going on with somebody I know and flat earth. And she lays it out. Well, and that she, can work. I just mean when people try to. Yeah, but she was slamming it. Yeah, that's true. But slamming flat earth doesn't bother me as much as slamming fellow human beings. Oh, right, bothers right, right, me. right. Name calling, uh, assuming because you saw a video saying somebody's an agent, and then just parroting that to someone else as if you yourself know it's true. Right. Um, the just the, the attempts to wound other people, ruin their reputation, mm. uh, dox them, uh, call people's uh, workplaces and try to undo their livelihood. These kind of really nasty things done actually by, in some cases, people who are truth seekers, to me, just isn't the right road to go. To, but, qu hmm. to quote Buckaroo Banzai, don't be mean, because no matter where you go, there you are. It's true. It's mm -hmm. true. It's a yeah. the karma thing or the, just in general, I, when I we won't. do good things, we our body gives us an instant good feeling. Right. You get a good feeling washing over you. When you do bad things, maybe for some people it gives them a good feeling, but they're kind of too far gone. So, you know. I mean, you knew what I put in the clues, which was, look, I can't do a malicious thing to anyone ever again. Now, that doesn't mean I won't defend myself if somebody tried to do something bad to me. It's like, oh, please, you know, run me over with a car. Uh, but at the same time, I can't because I look at the world in a whole different way, which is why, and we won't go too much into the whole demographics thing, I can't pick, uh, the extension of that is, I can't pick on any demographic group. I can't. Not what about the Eskimos? You have a well-known hatred see, of the Eskimos. Yeah, you had to bring them up. You hold it very close to your heart, this hatred. And it could be eating you up inside and creating cortisol flooding your body. And that could create some serious illnesses. Just, oh, all right, I'm, I'm going to use an office baseline. You might want to let the hatred of Eskimos go, Mark. Let it. Well, no, no, no. It's, no, it's not. <laughs> no, it's unwavering and unquenchable. However, what I mean is, does my hatred 
of the Eskimos have anything to do with flat earth? Does it help the flat earth cause in any way? And this is the office baseline, which is, is what you're doing good for flat earth? Whatever you're, think, whatever you're thinking of doing. Uh, in that case, no, which is why I don't bring it up. I don't offer it. Now, if people ask me, of course, you know, I, oh, it's a trigger for me. But at the same time, I won't, I won't, I won't go out of my way. And that's what I mean. It's like, look, just stay on point. You don't, you have extracurricular stuff. Fine. Do it on your own time. If, if it hurts the flat earth community, just bottle it up and release it later in a hail of gunfire. All right. You know what I mean, and and I'll <laughs> I'll expand more on the Eskimo. You guys want to know more, more about the Eskimo thing? Ask me about it at the conference, and which we should segue into the conference. And Uber I, Flatter says, "Let's all help Mark cope with the Eskimos." <laughs> Plain Permaculture says, "No idea if he's serious." <laughs> <laughs> exactly. The Eskimos, for those who don't know, are a stand-in for other groups that some people hate. And uh, while really, do flat earthing, do you want me to do, they, me to do the two-minute Eskimo speech? Do you want me to do it? Um, if you'd like, why not? For those who are joining us for the first time. <sighs> okay. People asked. This was when I was up in Victoria. Uh, somebody was asking me. They were asking me about the whole Eric Debay thing and why Eric and I do not are we were not on the same page. And I said, well, because he has a problem with Jewish people. It's well known. That's what he does. And people, you know, say, well, don't you have a problem with Jewish people? And I said, look, I don't have have a problem with Jewish people or black people or women or homosexuals or any other religion. I love everybody for the most part, with the exception of the Eskimos. <laughs> Is it because the homes that they make out of snow are dangerous? Yes. Yes, it is. It is partially because of that. Is it because their sense of fashion is ridiculous? Yes. Yes, it's also because of that. Is it because... My father died when his whaling ship was rammed by a giant Eskimo canoe in the Bering Sea. And your brother seriously injured. He lost a leg when some of those big ice blocks they use when they build their homes fell and crushed his leg. I mean. <laughs> now, pity. is any of that true? No, but it fits well into a <laughs> revenge narrative. And you're saying, why would you want a revenge narrative? My point is, if even if I had a revenge narrative, does my unwavering, un, unceasing hatred of the Eskimos, does this help the Flat Earth cause at all? No. And so I don't bring it up in a conversation. I won't make videos about them. I won't, you know, hit the streets with activism about them. I just won't. So you're saying, okay, what's the point? My point is, if you got a problem with another group, don't bring it into my arena. You know, you want to do it in your own time, fine. But if you're part of the Flat Earth Army, I'm sorry. If I, if I hear it and I'm talking to you, I won't be talking to you as much. There you go. Brian of Humanistory in the live chat says, no, no, no. They are the Inuit people, Mark, not Eskimos. <laughs> Get it right. Yeah, I don't recognize any of their definitions, all right? They are dead to me. Mark Ofsky says, stop blubbering about it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> See, that's good. That's uh, good. And I, there's some people that wouldn't even get that. They're like, why? Because like, of whale blubber. Get it? Because they eat whale blubber mm -hmm. and fish. A mm -hmm. lot of it. Mm -hmm. They're just horrible people. Uh, on a whole different topic, did anybody see the Jay Tolan Media One video, the new one, 1,000 mile visibility across Lake Huron to Hudson Bay? Yes. Yeah. It was brilliant. Okay. And, Infrared and cameras, part two, it's out now. I'll try to put a link in the description. Jay Tolan Media has done some fantastic camera footage. You know, when he player. first came out, I was worried that he was like, uh, I don't know. Um, that he was he was doing a slow troll on us? Yeah. Yes, like a here I am paranoid conspiracy woman. But uh, yeah, I thought it was all later. He'd be like, I fooled you guys. It's the, old, the old saying is true. And that if it's too good to be true, it probably is. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at this footage going, there's no way it could be that clear. And what, what we're talking about is he put a daytime infrared filter on his high end camera and started with digital zoom and started cranking up the horizon. He started in California and shot some stuff near Los Angeles. And then he went on a plane. Mm -hmm. And in memory, if you're on a plane, 
if the plane isn't running into turbulence, it's extremely stable. Extremely stable. I mean, you know, your water glass does not yeah. move. It's, it's you can drink nice. wine on a plane wearing a white blouse and you'll have no issues unless yeah. there's some turbulence. And unless they know when turbulence is coming. Yeah. They'll let you know ahead of time for the most part. And at 30,000 feet, he just puts the, the lens to the window and cranks it up. And he is, uh, sorry, if, I, if I'm not careful, I'm going to start talking like him because he's got a very distinct way yes, of talking. He does. It's European and it's very drawn out. Just look at that. I'm telling you. People. And that's one of the reasons why when he first came out, because his, his work seemed too good to be true, and the way he spoke, it's like, this can't be real. Right, yeah, but later I mean, it's, it's a it's not an over dramatic way of talking. It's just everything's accentuated. It's it mm -hmm. is. I mean, draw. <laughs> anyway, you know, five hundred miles. Just look at that. <laughs> right, and so he and he's he is shooting at an amazing distance, an incredible distance. When he was shooting from Indiana, he was flying over Indiana. He was shooting the Great Lakes. And as you know, you know, you're when when the angle, when the horizon starts getting way, way out there, each even, you know, everything gets gets far. The, the distances get compressed. And if he was actually looking into some of the straits of Canada, if that was the case, it's it's pretty much game over because there's no way. And he compared it with Google Earth. He's saying, look, this is what we, I should see from Google. You know, the Google Earth says I should see this far. And Google Earth, you know, shows a notable, you know, curve. And he's going, no, I can see much, much further. So check it out if you get a chance. It's J Tolan Media One. Kind of all run together. And I'll try to put the description, the link in the description box. Yeah. I say I try because, you know, I, at the end I of the show, there'll be seven things that I mentioned and I'll probably. It, it'll be, it's, it's easy to spot because it's when you put on the infrared filter, it goes into black and white. It's just shades and shades of, of gray, uh, but it's the, it's high contrast and it's beautiful. I mean, it's it's really stunning footage. You know what? That's a movie I never saw. Uh, Fifty Me neither. Of not going to. No interest. Never read the book. Not my thing. Uh, look, soft core is soft core. I mean, well, I, that's not the reason why. To me, it just seemed like one of those trends that society was jumping on at the time right. that seemed to indicate a downward spiral. And I try to stay from, away from downward spiral trends the society is engaging in wherever and whenever possible uh, i mean there's movies like that have come out basically since the 80s uh what was the first one with uh, mickey rourke and ooh, uh no. kim basinger yeah 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 nine and, and a half weeks nine and a half weeks nine See? and a half weeks oh, i mean no. come on nine and a half weeks did it better and they did it 30 years ago mm. And there has been movies ever since. And it was with Mickey Brooks original face too. So right before he decided that boxing was a great option. Well, boxing Although, is fine, but I think he did a lot of plastic surgery, which I'm not against. If well, I know after the boxing, he but lost. it was like he, his, his face he, looks melted. Kind he of. He was not a good boxer. He led with his face basically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he, he just, it was like, oh yeah, he, he was really bad at blocking for whatever reason and you know it didn't take long for oh yeah he looks like this but if you believe everything for a reason if he hadn't have done that and the reconstructive surgery and all the other stuff he wouldn't have been as convincing in his oscar winning performance of the wrestler yes yes okay marissa tomei starred with him yeah no. that was a brilliant movie i'm sorry I and mean, it was it was a he played it very very well because he was in amateur boxing he made uh, himself into a character actor i guess is what you're saying yeah and I think he also jacked himself up on on steroids. I mean, yeah, he right. went he went to absolutely as far as you would go. With he this went character. there. Yeah, he went. He was he was there. Hung out with the real wrestlers. You know, the aging wrestlers. And it's a tough sport. You know, it's it's worse than football because you are just punishing yourself yourself basically on a regular basis. Right. So. Right. So if you're into the what masochism thing, that might be there a you go. For you. Yeah. Forget about Fifty Shades of Grey. Just yeah, go watch just get the wrestling mean get hit over the head with a chair. <laughs> nice every night. I do want to mention that DITRH has a big interview coming out soon on the Doubt Me channel. Yes, the channel is called Doubt Me. Uh, the Doubt Me channel works with the Dawson brothers. Well, or not really Dawson brothers. Um, there's Shane, and then there's Shane Dawson, who has the channel Shane, and then there's Jared Yaw, but you could call him Sh Jared Dawson for all intents and purposes. Shane, um, okay. Yeah. Let's, let's anyway, clarify so this. Check Shane, it out. 
big interview with DITRH coming out on the Doubt Me channel soon. So go to the Doubt Me channel, subscribe now, and then when the interview comes out, you'll you'll get the notification, maybe, the way YouTube works, and you'll be able to see it. You won't forget. Remind me, you and I probably should talk a little bit after that, about mm -hmm. that after the show. Mm -hmm. Shane Dawson's name used to be Shane Yaw. Yaw. Y-A-W, and he changed it, and his brother Jared kept it. Got it. So there you go. Let's see what else is going on in our live chat. Hello to Josh from Morgan and DITRH, since I mentioned him, Bob of Glowbusters. Um, Bob uh, wasn't here, I think, at the start, or maybe he was, but we were talking about, Bob, your great performance on CBS, and he was asked by uh, somebody named Bill Keith in the live chat about how long your interview was, and he says the actual interview was over an hour long. Interesting, same as me, right. Bob. Uh, I guess that's just what they do. And, and, they people... and they keep that footage that is there you know they will if this thing when it, this thing gets bigger mm -hmm. they will use more of that footage later if they have to i want to say hello to elisa Brittany, who says loves and hugs and fpv angel hello there and flat earth vegans hello guys looking forward to seeing you in denver brian staveley and zorro Zorro says, can't wait for the Martin Kenny interview, the cosmic egg model. Well, this week was kind of weird. Uh, I was supposed to yesterday, Tuesday the 23rd, interview Martin Kenny. That didn't work out. We're going to reschedule. And before that, on Monday, I was supposed to interview. Um, uh, do you hear my cats going crazy here? I do hear the cats. <laughs> what are they doing, you guys? Trying to get some love and attention. I don't blame them. Uh, from the Flat Earth channel. Um, uh, Matt Long, uh, we were supposed to do a show on Monday, but he w had a uh, visitation with his daughter. So anyway, so both shows got canceled. So here we are doing this darn show. Can't cancel on you. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? Can't cancel on you. Yeah, anyway, but... so those will be rescheduled at some point in time. Also, there seems to be something happening where I'm going to go to Dallas to do some kind of an interview soon. Uh, you heard about this? If, I, I mean, have you already confirmed with them? I haven't confirmed, but they messaged me and said they want to fly me out there to do something at the end of the month um which is coming right around the corner to talk with some other flat earthers i guess they're doing a documentary or something I that, no is idea. that the the blast group yes that's who it is oh, okay yeah 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 they they contacted me and said um uh yeah who's in dallas <laughs> and it's like well first thing you should know is we have people everywhere <laughs> and yes Skiba. Yeah, Rob Skeeb is in Dallas. Matt, uh, Matt Long, Long from Flat Earth. In, in, and uh, Chris Pontius is Chris up there. Pontius. And you. And I'm kind of close. And you're close enough. And yeah. so I said, I go, here's the four that, that uh, you should probably grab as soon as you can. And they said, fantastic. Uh, in fact, one of you, I I don't know. I imagine it's going to be Rob. It could be Matt, though. We, uh, he wa The initial thing, if you read the email, I think they he wanted them to to whoever it was to debate John B. Wells. Well, one of the people that's contacted me is part of the crew that produces John B. Wells. So, yeah, I don't really oh. know. All right. So, well, you might I mean, want to clarify. Why can't DITRH debate John Wells? I mean, well, they've because, done because back and be, forth in emails, but I think it's got to be, person. it's got to be local. Oh. So, initially, again, no, you, you, you are part of the group. Uh, but the first person I said, because, you know, Rob Skeep is just looking. You remember, he's going to be deb debating uh, Robert Sungenis here. I know. Time. And so it's like, you all better right, get well. some boxing gloves and get ready. Uh, <laughs> it's it's fine. But again, uh, Robert Sungenis is geocentric as well. Mm -hmm. So it's not that going to be that much of a stretch. He just mm -hmm. thinks that the Earth is the center of a big universe. Mm. And we say that the Earth basically is the Earth. And we say, prove it. I'm cool with that. Just prove it. Uh, I, I hear you. Like, show me something. Like, show me pictures of these other, of the black holes and blah, 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 blah that aren't CGI. Right. Can't right. do it. I agree. Earth's flat. Hey, you're Case preaching, closed. Preaching to the choir. Good night, here. everyone. <laughs> nice. Uh, anyway, well, uh, oh, did I say uh, hello to Cammy? I don't think I did. Hello, Cammy. Um, Jacob Morley as well. Justin Brunk. Justin says Flat Earth is taking a toll on my relationship. LOL. Oh, that's no good. But then again, you know, we all have to stand firm for what we believe in, but also realize not everybody will be in the same place as you and just act with love. 
with right. whoever you're with that isn't where you are because who knows they might be at some time in the future or they could be tolerant and supportive of you although not on the same page either one of those things is great but then you've got people like bob and cammy or the flat earth vegans as i mentioned that are on the same page and isn't that a joy yes. i mean that's what we all want that's what i think we all want anyway i i yes mm -hmm. i'm totally with you there uh mm -hmm. do you want to talk about the big video of the week, which would be the Seweb. I don't want to pronounce it like that because I know he's doing this kind of like a speech impediment. Celebrity pro profile, Flat Earth Rocket Man on Tosh.0. Oh. Yeah, okay. I, did we talk about that last week? No, it hadn't happened. Wait a minute. I feel like we did talk about Mad Mike and Tosh 2.0. No, it hadn't, it hadn't been released Oh, yet. we talked about it as in it's coming up. It's coming up. Oh, and and uh, now it has aired and it's got tons and tons of views. Oh, so uh, yeah. It'll probably that's bring a, half a plus. Half a million by tonight. Uh, it's been up for three, going on four days. I swear, I thought last Wednesday we spoke about it. Well, we did, but it hadn't. But it had not happened yet. I swear, I think it did. No, no, sure it didn't. Mm, you better check. Well, I, the, well, look, I'm I'm reading the. Uh, uh, probably today's the twenty fourth. Comedy Central posted it on the twenty first. Okay, so what happened probably was that maybe. No, no, no. It, aired it was going to happen. It was telegraphed. We knew about it days in advance. But you and I were joking about the stuff that he said, Mad Mike, that was sexual in nature. I swear we talked about this before. So maybe would did we catch the bootleg of it before it was put on YouTube? Maybe because we saw it and we talked about it last week. Anyway, yeah, but I hadn't watched the whole thing. Oh, think. okay. Well, doesn't matter when it aired. Anyway, it recently aired Mad Mike on Tosh 2.0 with it. Right canned laugh track and some kind of potty humor. However, it got a lot of people to look at the video, to right. hear about Mad Mike, to hear about the rocket, and to hear that he wasn't doing it to prove Flat Earth, he was doing it to just draw attention to Flat Earth. Yeah. So in the end, more ears and eyes on Flat Earth, hey, that's and, a good thing. And it was notable because Daniel Tosh brought him into the studio. Yes. Which is different from most things where they have to come to us or you know, it's, it's off in some secondary location, but mm -hmm. I, it wasn't a bad interview. Like I, yeah. I, you know, it, it could have been could have been worse. And and this is the second story that Tosh has run on the subject. He's you know, it's, interested. It's in, it's in his head. He's a mm -hmm. conspiracy guy. Yeah. He, you know, he's one of those. He, you remember the the old one that he did last year with Tiger Dan, where he made that little side comment about conspiracies. How it's like uh, he was being sarcastic sarcastic about how jet fuel can burn steel. And you know th that's the joke. Everyone nine eleven knows that uh, you know jet fuel just can't hold that sort of that sort of heat to actually melt steel beams. So. You know, I'm looking at some Mad Mike stuff on Comedy Central, and I see six days ago something aired that was the Tosh two point um, That could have been it. Yeah, so that's six days ago, and then there's some stuff that posted that just aired several days ago. So either way, either way, that's either way. You remember, most of our audience they you know are straight into YouTube. So mm -hmm. this was three days. Yeah, I've never watched Tosh 2.0 period at all. I just see it on YouTube. He's well, obviously, doing because a story because the title is officially Tosh Point oh, not Tosh 2.0. Oh, Tosh. Point oh, sorry. Why do I think it's Tosh 2.0? Uh, maybe because during some of my Q and A's recently in front of audiences, I've been saying that flat Earth is is really the flat Earth 2.0. Or we're in, right? maybe I just got it wrong. That's probably pretty possible. I call I call the flat Earth Society flat Earth 1.0. Everything everything before the social media wave 1.0, and then we're 2.0. Mm. I do that. want to um give a very loving final salute to a flat earth dog who went by the name of D-O-G. That's D-O-G. That was Bob and Cammie and their son, Jaren's dog who died a few days ago. And it's just sad when we lose our animal friends. So yes. farewell, D-O-G, wherever you may be. Hopefully, wherever that is, has all the things you love in it. Agreed. <sighs> Sad. I used to house sit for uh, my neighbor back in Boulder, Colorado, and it was a friend of mine. And they had a uh, Akita, big Akita dog, and she mm -hmm. was she was older, and it was starting to get tougher and tougher to where I just couldn't house sit her anymore because I knew you know the end was coming. 
And so I said, you know what, you, you know, just might want to think about it. And they held on for another four months. And then they finally, you know, had, had her put down. But I got so, the three cats, three sibling cats, two boys and a girl in, I think they were born in March. I think either I, yeah, they were born in March of 2015, which is weird because that's when I got into Flat Earth and mm -hmm. I got them when they were weaned. Anyway, um, that means this coming March, they'll be four years old. And I thought about that the other day and it made me feel sad because yeah. our animal friends don't live as long as we wish they would. And it made me start thinking at, I'll be 56 years old in February, how long will my friends, my friendly cats live? And then will I be able to get more cats after that? You know, you hear about older people yeah. that can't take care of their animals or dogs or cats or whatever at right. a later stage in their life. And I want to always have cats. That just makes me very happy. So I, I thought of that at one point where, you know, because there are animals that live longer than people, uh, tortoises and elephants, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I thought it's probably better, it's the lesser of two evils that, that that our domesticated friends don't live as long as us so that we can be around for them because otherwise you constantly be worrying let's say i had a giant tortoise i would be so worried it's like who's going to take care of my tortoise when i'm gone Type i guess of. that's true we're the caretaker of the animals yeah and um in the bible it says something about humans have been given dominion over animals and to me that means caretaker it doesn't mean kill and eat and that's my vegan message of the day thank you very much everyone. wow i had to slip that in didn't you <laughs> one 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 little one every show nice i want to say hello to poncho beats and all people free people and um i know both those guys yeah exactly uh paul hogston um and manuel aviles who says trees live a long time yeah that is true I have a tree in the front of my house that has never been doing well since I bought the house. It wasn't doing well. And I keep trimming it back. The arborist comes and it's just not looking that good. It's an oak. And I don't want to take it down because it's not just a, it's not just a building or something. It's a living being. And I look out and I see it and I try to be a good caretaker of it. We don't know what trees, what they, what their life is, you know, they, they could be, very perceptive, more perceptive than we know about life. They're not really just an inanimate object. They're alive. Everything's alive. Is the tree in the way? <laughs> no, it's not. But nope. if a tree falls. <laughs> no. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> oh. We'll we'll discuss that offline too, probably. So, I worry about my tree is what oh. I'm <laughs> Hello to Martin Leadkey and um, you and Plasso Platus, Plasso Platus says trees breathe and sing. I believe that. I believe that. And I have a favorite tree, which is the weeping willow. I think they're incredibly beautiful. So, well, maybe there we should talk about a uh, flat earth. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So there are three flat earth meetups, which I posted today. And let me fire up the old video editor. Uh, let's see. First one was Dublin, Ireland. That's going to be November 3rd. And they're calling off. that one, in a way, sort of a conference, aren't Are they? they? I think so. Uh, well, no, no, wait, no, no. That's diff This is different. From okay, the there is this. a conference in Ireland soon. Small yeah, one. yeah, I know. This this right. one, Paul on the Plane, had me do. And, and Paul know, on the Plane is going to that one. The one that I'm posting, yes. Yes, exactly. Yes. Uh, also one in Toronto, November 4th, and the one that's going to happen before that will be in Dallas on October 28th. Cool. Lots of things happening. And if you've yeah. got an event happening or know someone who does, make sure to get uh, information to Mark Sargent fairly ahead of time right. at msargent23 at comcast.net, and he will make a promo for you. Um, if you've got a bigger channel than Mark, then you you can make your own promo. However, if you don't, well, if you have editing, help if you, you. No, if you have video editing skills, and look, I am not the, the best video editor in the world by a long shot. I use a free program. I use Live mm -hmm. Movie Maker. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you, you know, just aren't into that, and, and who knows? I mean, yeah, if your YouTube channel isn't very big, by all means, shoot shoot me the thing and I'll throw it up there and it'll and it does generate 
people do go based on the the trailers i make oh yes definitely i was like oh really i didn't know there was one in akron i'm gonna go <laughs> yeah. hey honey get the kids <laughs> get the station wagon yeah we're gonna we're gonna go for flat earth and ice cream <laughs> uh yeah and these are in various places but it should be fun i mean they all tend to, to go pretty well and the more you can do before the conference we still haven't talked about the conference yet we probably should i do want to add to what we were talking about about ireland the thing that they're kind of calling a conference it's like a meetup plus i guess you could say the one paul on the plane's going to it's right. november 3rd and they are meeting at the Westin Hotel Dublin. Right. And uh, there is a, a promo out. Um, Mark Doxy, D-O-X-E-Y, has a promo out on his channel. And you can find out more information on Paul and the Plains channel. And also, there's going to be Irish music, too. So yep. Bring your own rocks. <laughs> rocks. You know, to throw at the British. I it's, don't know that. It's tradition. Dublin. It's oh, it's Ireland. You know, they, it's oh, the yeah. whole, you know, British side. And you can do that special Irish dancing where the upper part of your body doesn't move, but your lower body moves. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, what was that? Show? Was it Lord River of the Dance? Dance? River Dance. <laughs> yeah. yeah. River Dance. Yeah. Go on YouTube. Funny. Spend yeah. an hour watching that stuff. An hour. I think five minutes is enough. It is actually incredibly hard to do. And yes. you, you have to be quite talented to do any sort of dance. So I admire all that. Yeah. I prefer the dance of the weeping willow myself. It's a very diverse world. And until I saw River Dance, you know, that was a thing ooh, 20 years ago. Yes. When, like, it was like we first brought the videos to America and then they start touring. Uh, and because of that one guy who ended up going solo, well, with his own group called Lord well, I can't of the Dance. remember his name, but he was like the hot stud. Of yeah, the yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I look this guy up real fast. <laughs> Pretty sure he had a very cliche Irish name. Hello to Zane and Constance Bruns and Caroline AZFE Chick. How are you doing? Nathan Oakley 1980 is here as well. And Michael Flatley. <laughs> Brian, if you man a story, yep. He knows yeah, Michael yeah, Flatley. Michael, Michael Flatley. Yep, yep, uh, yep. Wait a minute. Flatley. Hmm. Ah, somebody hmm. should get a hold of him. <laughs> he uh he could say that he needs to dance like that because Earth is flat. So I've got to keep everything on the level. Yep, known for Irish dances, river dance, Lord of the Dance, Feet of Flames. Feet and of Flames. Come on, that's the worst. That's the most ill advised name ever. Feet of Flames. And Sounds Celtic. Like you need to go to the doctor if you've got that. I no, and Celtic that. Tiger. Celtic Tiger, Crouching Dragon. <laughs> yeah, he just got worse as he was. Uh, his feet at one time were insured for 57 million. It's like Betty Grable, the old time Hollywood actress. Her legs were insured for scads of money for the same reason but he was born he's from chicago huh didn't that's know that's interesting i thought he was i mean you know he's got um, of course um you know deep deep irish ancestry but i did not know he's from chicago <laughs> and and yeah the river dance was in 1994 and that's when it really took off and then feet of flames Feet of flames. It just sounds like something you, like an itchy sort of disease. <laughs> I don't know what's that thing called. Um, when you go to the when men go to the gym and you don't wear sandals and the athlete's movie. foot. Athlete's foot. Holy <laughs> smokes! You, you've never had athlete's foot. No. I mean, people do. Ever? No. No. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Mm. No, I know, I know. Well, yeah, when when I was growing up, we didn't, yeah, when we did, you know, athletics, nobody wore, wore sandals in the freaking shower. You're supposed to wear sandals in the shower. That's something they didn't tell us when we were growing up. They wanted you to suffer the feet. That we didn't know. Flames. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's like, like your feet hurt. It's like, why is your skin falling off my feet? You know, the skin grows pretty fast, but yeah. Bob of Globuster says Catherine Bach, Daisy Duke, the original Daisy Duke, had her legs insured for $1 million. Isn't it weird to get body parts insured? Yeah, that's mostly a publicity. My whole story. face is messed up from the car accident, but my legs are fine. Therefore, no insurance payments. <laughs> Tina Turner, same thing. Yeah, that's true. Oh, I should mention, by the way, that hang on. I should mention that the uh, that CBS piece that you were on mm -hmm. is getting a whole bunch of activity. Uh, not yeah. I mean, sure. Oh, you mean it's like all, comments like "flat earthers should drink bleach and die," "don't breed," blah blah blah. 
uh, well, to any producers that are listening, you remember producers, what they say, it's like, it doesn't matter if you love it or you hate it, as long as you're talking about it. And I agree with that. I think that if as a person on YouTube, to me, that's why I've said before, thumbs up, thumbs down, whatever. Correct. It's better than absolute nothing. Absolute oh, yeah. nothing, ignoring or being completely unaware of something. That's this really the death. Right. Um, being hated, disliked, that's about as good as being liked, I guess. Although we all would prefer being liked. If you're a CBS producer and you're looking for the perfect balance, this video, the, the video that you were in on CBS Sunday Morning with Jane Pauley, is perfect. It's got 175,000 hits, not bad. 1,500 up, 1,200 down which is pretty much in that bracket and 8,400 comments already. With a video like that, I'm always unsure what to do. Should I like it when it said, in essence, there was a disc floating through space and other flat earth society things I don't approve of? Or should I like it because the media's done a story on flat earth? Should I give it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? What What's the way to go? So I end up giving those sorts of things a thumbs up. And the reason is, because it'll show up on my list of videos that I've given thumbs up to. And if anybody looks at that, they, they might watch it and yeah. it might get more traction. And it might alert news media when they see a channel like the CBS channel that's getting a lot of thumbs up on something like that, that, hey, we, we need to look into this flat earth thing or we need to do more stories on it because obviously this is a hot topic. Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And and I didn't know uh, DITRH had to tell me, he goes, hey, you know who the, the most popular comment in the 8400 comments is? Who is it? It's, it's me. Uh, it's what? it's my rubber stamp, which I what? changed my rubber stamp, which says, thank you for in introducing your subscribers to the Fly Earth concept. For those of you new to this, your world is about to change. Everyone, I changed it. Everyone laughs at first. But when you're done, ask yourself this. Can you prove the Earth is a globe without NASA? Because they didn't invent the globe. Do your own research and ask questions. Long live flat Earth and hail Hydra. I didn't say that at the end, <laughs> but but it's got 460 thumbs up, but 412 replies. Wow, I know that's a lot of replies, and I I haven't even gone through them all. And it's, I actually did look at that. Come to think of it, a while back when the thing first came out, I haven't looked at the comments since the day it came out because it's just too overwhelming. But um, I did look at that, and there was I think there were people fighting back and yeah, forth. Yeah, that's what it is. It's there's people unrelated, really, to you or I or anybody else in that in that story, and they're just like fighting with each other about. Yep. That's what Jonathan told me all you know, three years ago, where he said you got to allow comments because people like slugging it out. It's you know it's like yeah, you know, let's fight. Them's fighting words, you know, and they just blam blam blam. By the way, did we ever find out where Jonathan from Jersey went? Disappeared off nope. the face of the flat Disappeared. Earth. If anyone has any proof of life or not, I'd love to hear it. I used to talk to him on the phone occasionally, but that doesn't work anymore, that number. Mm. No. So anyway, so yeah, it is generating and and compare that to like Tina Turner's piece, which was in the same show, mm -hmm. which also has got pushing 200,000 hits, but only ha has less than a thousand comments. Because remember, it's like, you know, what are you, you going to say? There's no controversy there. Producers. I mean, love. everyone likes Tina Turner. Yeah. It's like it's, she's a survivor. Right. And, and of course, legs, the ratio is voice. much, you know, mm -hmm. ratio is 90 percent positive. This is, again, anyone looking at this. It, and this isn't an isolated incident by a long shot. Every station that that covers this topic sees this. You know, they get just just people. They have to comment. People that have never commented before in their lives. We'll create brand new channels and go in and make a make a comment. Uber so. Flatter says snack to the future lives by him unless he has moved. Very interesting. Uber asks Snack to see if he knows uh where Jonathan from Jersey is and if he's okay. I mean, I don't know. Just you know, when you talk to somebody and you know somebody for a while, even if it's only virtually, it's just as weird when they just kind of yep. disappear. I, uh, I hear you. I yeah. totally hear you. Um, I want to say hi to Daniel Reza and Mikey Smith and Page 42. And I don't know if I said hello to Karen B. Uh, Nameless is here or S-S-E-L-E-M-A-N. Um, who else? Oh, hello, Ginger Sugarbush905 and Ace McLeod. Uh, earlier when my cats were making noise, you might have missed that if you're just joining us now. Ginger said that his cats heard the noise of my cats. <laughs> 
and freaked out. It's kind of weird. I think Ginger calls every Flat Earth show on TFR. Well, that's good. I guess it is. Yeah, you don't it's have great. to call every show. <laughs> um, By hello that I mean, to... don't call mine. That's just what I'm saying. Ginger, don't do it. Hello to Jack Frost. Hello there. Um, I don't know if I said hello to Sleeping Warrior. I might have. I don't know. I hate when I don't remember. Chris Lee Lewis is here. It says, great ad, Mark, and great job in the interview, Patricia. Wow, that's a nice thing to say. I know, right? The, about the hat. You're wrong about the hat, but... <laughs> <laughs> I know the hat bugs you and the microphone it bugs you. It doesn't really. It doesn't really. I it just does. It does. You about it things. really bugs you. You'd never be caught, as said, you wouldn't be caught dead in either <laughs> of these. You wouldn't. Well, we can't wait to see what you're going to be wearing to the Flatty Awards at the conference, which is a good segue into the conference. The conference. conference it's coming up um, in the description box of this channel. You will find a link so you can purchase so tickets. If you go to fe2018.com, you will see that we are down to the final. It's 21 days from right now. So three 21 weeks. Days. Yep, days. Three weeks from now. That three weeks actually. Action. Three weeks from tomorrow. So 21 days, 17 hours. And if you go there, of course, register, get involved in some way. If you can't show up in person or if you can't buy the tickets, show up and just hang out in the lobby because there's going to be a whole, you know, we're taking over the hotel basically. And by that, I mean hostages. <laughs> and we, if you can't do that, do the live stream or do whatever you can. Just be involved in some way because it is going to be an event to remember. I can't yeah. wait to meet some of the people that I've, kind of hung out with virtually for such a long time, um, like bling bling the BS of the ISS and right. Caroline, or not Caroline, AZFE chick. Sorry, I don't even know why I just said that. Um, Ace McLeod, because I've already met Caroline. Right. Um, uh, the Hori Sheet Show is going. There are people that, um, I don't know, I feel like I've already met them, but I didn't. Doesn't that make, does that make sense to you? Yes. You know, because yeah, it does. you feel like you've met everybody, but then we're going to meet in person. And the the official list. Let me rattle them off, shall we? Because uh, because it's changed. By the it way. has in fact, changed. There's, there's some people. Have you looked at the schedule since yesterday? Why don't you go through the whole schedule for everyone? Okay. And I'll just sit back here and enjoy. So the, well, all right. If I have to go on the schedule, that's fine. Uh, I it was just going to look at their pictures, but that's fine. Well, so, maybe they changed it since last you checked. I mean, you never know. No, no, no. We're we're good. So the countdown with George Moss, who I I don't think I've met. Have you met George Moss? No. He's he's like the pre MC. George Moss. Why do I not so, know that? I feel bad. Name, actually, pre MC. I no, I I no, I I think he's just part of the MC group. And then you have Robbie Davidson and Rick Hummer as the four. They? They, yeah, they're doing the, the kickoff. And the reason I have to mention this is because we now have officially we have tracks. We have different tracks. So if you don't want to watch somebody on the main stage, you can go to the workshop shop stage and watch somebody else doing whatever. Right, so, and that's what what was learned from the first conference a year ago in November in Raleigh, North Carolina. Yeah. Some people want choices. That's pretty much how the Democratic and Republican Party system works. And the sad thing is, is that like, like for example, Karen B, I believe she's speaking at the same time um, when Paul is doing a workshop. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so yeah. on the first day, and I, I won't be able to go to all these because I'm working with different Group. And then there's interviews, media interviews, where oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. you might be yeah. doing one of those and you might miss. Oh, I'm going, well, last year, you know, I did 14 interviews in two days and I missed a lot. And I really was sad that I missed Rob Skiba because I hadn't seen the slide yet where he said that I ruined his life. Hmm. That's really what I wanted to, wanted to say. Okay, so the um, uh, 8.30 to 9 in the main day, we've got the FE 2018 kickoff, followed by 9 to 10.30, testing the globe, a zetetic investigation with Rob Skiba. That's in the main stage. 10.45 to 11.30, we have Nathan Thompson doing Flat Earth 101. And aside from that, at the same time, we have the workshop stage Flat Earth and the Moon with Dave Marsh and Richard Hopkins. 11.45 to 12.30, we have on the main stage, Karen, otherwise known as Karen B. And at the same time, so Karen Karen B and Paul on the plane, they're going toe to toe, right? So I, I will be going, unfortunately, I have to choose between the two. I'm gonna go with Karen because she owns class three weapons. But you also uh, can go 
into one and then leave and then go into another. Although yeah, it might good. make the person on stage feel that people are leaving in the middle of his or her presentation and make them feel bad. Don't let guilt run your lives, people. Oh, wait, maybe there's a sign we can give. If you have to get up during a presentation to go watch another presentation, as you stand up, just make the flat symbol and then everybody will know. You don't think the speaker's boring. You just need to go catch the other one. <laughs> or you could do it deliberately and just walk out and do thumbs down. <laughs> I'm leaving. <laughs> I don't know what's happening here, but I don't like I it. I don't like it. <laughs> uh, okay, so Paul on the Plane's doing Oh Gravity at the same time that Karen's doing uh, her thing. And then lunch break is 12.30 to 1.30 on the first day, followed by Globusters Live on the main stage with Bob, Jaron, and Iru. 2.30 to 3.15, we have Biblical Cosmology with Zen Garcia. At the same time, we have Flat Earth Activism at the workshop stage with Joshua Swift. Authentic intent. Yes, authentic intent. 3.30 to 4.15, we have two things running. Ooh, that's going to be an interesting competition. You have D Marble on the main stage. And who's going across from him? Women in Flat Earth with uh, Karen, Cami, and uh, Patricia. Yeah. Mm. So, yeah, those three. That uh, no, that would be fun. I'm in a misty marble. Yeah, I know. That's sad. Sad. <laughs> sad. But he's in the main stage. He'll be fine. And then, in fact, uh, most of the women will be there watching him. <laughs> Uh, the three women on the panel will be just talking to each other. <laughs> no, no, we're no, just like I, checking I, our phone for messages. I, I, There's no I'm one here. No, no, I already decided if, because uh, um, you know I'm a big fan of women in flat Earth, that I will be going to that if I am not being tied up with some other thing. Okay, uh, four thirty to five, we have flat Earth with the scientific. We'll be repeating these and. You can show. find all of this, by the way, on the website. Exactly. But I know you guys are lazy, so am I, I'm just going <laughs> to... I'm lazy, too. I'm like, read it for us, Mark. <laughs> uh, flat Earth, well, I guarantee you don't have this memorized. Uh, flat Earth with the Scientific Method is 4.30 to 5.30 with Dave Murphy on the main stage. We have our dinner break from 5 to 7, 5.30 to 7. Is that um, where the VIP dinner happens, too? No, it is not. Not on the first day. In oh. fact, everything is a big, big finale gala on the second day, which we'll get to. This is remember this is all just the first day, and then from seven to nine. Here's the reason why is because we had to do the impromptu last minute Rob Skiba versus Robert Sungenis debate. I think in Scotland, I had a Scottish boyfriend for quite some time. He called it when things have to get mixed up and changed, um, jiggerty pokerty. So I think jiggerty pokerty was. I hope that's nothing bad. It just means like you have to this person and this person. Yeah, that's a Scottish thing that really didn't blend over here. Uh, um, Elisa Brittany in the live chat would know what that meant. Chickardy po yeah, I've never heard it. I'm not going to use it. Okay, so uh, November 16th. Which what if it means something racist or something really immoral? Sorry. No, no, because... Uh, 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 you know what? I'm not going to even go into it in case I screw this up. <laughs> yeah, let's look it up, guys. So November 16th, which is the Friday, kickoff is from 8.30 to 9, again, with Robbie and Rick, followed by 9 to 10.15, Flat Earth Clues Q&A. Wait a minute. No one's going to show up for that. Yawn City. Yeah, Ooh, I'd I'm sleep. I'd sleepy s even thinking about it. Sleep. Sleep. <laughs> I hate you so much. By the way, uh, Sleeping Warrior says jiggery pokery equals mix things up a little. Okay. Got it. Well, you were it's right. It's a real thing. So uh, anyway, nine, 9 to 10, 15, I am going to be doing flatter Q&A. As you know, I'm probably going to give a little speech beforehand and then settle in for questions. And I will be also giving out Illuminati cards. Oh, am I going to be your uh, Vanna White again? Do you want to do the Illuminati cards yeah. on, on the I'm site? Sure. Yeah, you were. You were. You did really great at at Canada when you let that news media person. I know. Speak. She's like, I need to cut ahead everybody else, and I was kind of afraid of her because she was like a bulldog kind you of. And I'm should like, have kept your pimp hand strong. I you should know, just, next time. Bah. Right. Uh, followed immediately by NASA and other space lies with Jaron. Capanella. That'll be He's good. doing a solo thing. Is it thing. true? Is it just a rumor that Jaron's bringing somebody special with him to this uh, conference? His new boyfriend that he met at the YMCA? <laughs> Shh, don't talk about that. Uh, no, the one that we are talking about. I can't oh, the old about. boyfriend 
from the that pilot bar um, called the cockpit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, the, the construction bar called the manhole. Mm. No. Whatever. Uh, yeah. So, what, can we even talk? It about that? might be true, and I will say no more. I yes, I heard. And it has nothing to do with a boyfriend, by the way. I heard he's. I know, right? <laughs> I don't want that to start. Well, that's, she thought it was that's, true. <laughs> that's a secret. We're not supposed to talk about. Well, it is a secret show. Uh, are we, no, are we supposed to talk about the? I don't know, and maybe I guess. All right, so Ger Jaren's Jaren's bringing a, a a plus one. Right. Who is it? Hmm. Hmm. Will there be drama? Will drama ensue? Will happiness? I don't know. The way, with the rule of the day. Yes. I don't know. I I'm just gonna have fun watching Jessica basically hold on to Matt. <laughs> because if Matt's walking around solo, you know, and the women that don't know that he's currently engaged to be married. All yeah. women know that he and Jessica are engaged to be married. Uh, there and will everyone's be people happy. there. Will, you know how it goes. There's going to be people that you're that saying don't heads know. will roll is what you're saying. I'm just saying if I was Jessica, I would bring a sharpened toothbrush or something. <laughs> Go for the neck. Jessica. Okay. Uh, 1030 to 1130. We have, this is day oh, I'm two. sorry. I'm sorry. I screwed this up. So Jaron is doing his thing on the main stage at the same time that Nathan Roberts is doing ways. The Bible says flat earth on the workshop stage. So there's your break. You know, there's your, your break, which is you have secular on one side, biblical on the other side. And at some point in time, as this continues, we will have someone speaking about the Quran and flat earth. People say a criticism is it's a Christian conference. Yes, Robbie Davidson is Christian and he's the organizer of the conference. So therefore, what do you expect? Right. But he's very open to anything else and other people representing different things. I'm not Christian. Um, so there are others who speak as well who aren't Christian. I'm not against Christian. In fact, I was baptized a Christian, but, um, but my mom, was Jewish, so what am I other than a person who tries to do the best they can? So what I'm saying is, is that there is a Christian leaning because the organizer is Christian, but everyone is welcome. And in the future, when more people are aware, there will be other workshops with other beliefs expressed. And if you happen to know anybody who's got a channel that is that the speaking English, that's kind of a caveat. Right. That is, you know, on a steady roll, doing good things, not trying to fight with other people. That's all, you know, they don't, we don't want speakers who are trying to fight with other people, right. um, you know, doing negative hit pieces right and left um, about people in the community. Um, and their belief is different than Christianity. And just talk to Robbie. Um, it could be one of those things. If you develop a rapport, boom, he might have you uh, speak one year. So. Right. The fun doesn't stop there. Right after the Jaron and uh, Nathan section, we go into another dual track. Iru Sanducci on the main stage with Truth. Oh, it's Landucci. What did I say? I think you said Sanducci. Oh, wow. Sorry, Sanchez. sorry, sorry. He was sorry. Like yeah. some combo guy. <laughs> wow. Uh, yeah. Uh, Iru Landucci. Uh, not to be confused with Lando Calrissian. Uh, and then on the other stage, we have Where Are We Earth According to the Bible with Chad Taylor. That is followed by the uh, Flat Earth and the Bible Q&A. So that's the big, uh, and in and fact, uh, oh, that's a dual one too. So on the main stage, we have Robbie Davidson, Rob Skiba, Zen Garcia, Chad Taylor, and Nathan Roberts. Mm -hmm. And on the second stage, we have Talking to Your Family and Friends about Flat Earth. And that is going to be an interesting one because that's with co-hosts uh, David Weiss and Matt Long. That will be great. From? Flat Earth and from, the from Flat Earth Podcast. Flat Earth Podcast. Right. Well, they're both from the Flat Earth Podcast, but Matt Podcast. Long's from the Flat Earth channel. So. Right. Yeah. yeah. So that'll be fun. I, I, don't, I don't know when would, that, that's a toss up there. It is a toss up. That's one of those where you're going to have to get up and halfway through and give the symbol and then yeah. go to the other one. Go to the symbol. <laughs> You know, they're, yeah, the media is going to be like, so it's a cult, right? And remember, don't put it near your neck because then crazy people will say it's a I don't generally, I only put it by my neck only when I'm, you know, ducking down for The pictures. reality is the real initiation hand symbol that has a thing near your neck. I won't do it because then somebody will capture it and say I'm a mason. Uh, you know what? Is We're a uh, off with your head slight, I'll do it down here. It's a slicing motion at your neck. The motion has to be there, like cut off the head. 
that's what it has to be. So when somebody is doing this and smiling with friends, it's the flat earth fun friendship. We're all in I, the thing together symbol. I had a girl do that. She actually threw up the sign on her own when we were coming out of the uh, festival. We'll talk about the festival thing in a sec. Um, up in Bellingham, when she goes, she took a picture with me. She had never knew nothing about it. Watched the movie for the first time. She goes, okay, can I get a picture with you? And she remembered the people doing it in the movie. And she was, I didn't even have to ask her. Oh my she gosh, just, that is so cool. I know. It's going, I was going, wow. I go and you throw So she saw behind the curve in Washington. Yeah. Yeah. She saw behind in the, the curve. Theater. Okay. So anyway, let me finish off this. So the 3.30 to 4.45, that is the Flat Earth Q&A mega panel. Mega panel. And that's with Patricia Steer hosting, I believe, David Weiss, Mark Sargent, Dave Murphy, Karen B, Bob Nodell, Rob Skiba, and Jaron Campanella. Is there going to be an alarm going off like in Canada? Let's hope not. Because that could be a thing. Could be that, like a thing that happens. That is the uh, last official flat earth heavy a thing from 3.30 to 4.45 on Friday. Then that is followed by the VIP and speakers dinner from 5 to 6.30. Dinner break from five to six thirty as well you know for every, for everybody else and then from this is where it gets fun seven to eight we have flat earth man live on the main stage nice you guys have alex yep he is going to be singing his songs for an hour gonna be a lot of fun and that is followed of segue right into dun 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 the flatty awards the flat earth video awards yes. 2018 hosted by patricia steer and mark Sargent. What is Mark going to wear? What is Patricia I going to wear? To Will there be any weird antics? Will anything odd happen? Find out. Uh, probably all these things. Uh, <laughs> yeah. My out, my outfit is slightly different and my glasses are different because, as you know, last year uh, my glasses were taken from me by a, a crazed listener. Mm. Yeah. I, I won't think, say. I think you who, gave them to who, her. Who her name was, Didn't Candy. You? What? <laughs> I think you gave them to her. I did give. No, she asked. You know, uh, last year I wore a uh, chiffon dress, very flowy material in a very, very light blue color. Right. And a flat earth hater made some kind of hit piece video and said that I was dressed like Princess Leia. And I'm like, I don't think Princess uh, Leia ever wore that. So. And that's ridiculous. So. And if I was a Jedi person, I'd say she didn't look anything like Mary Poppins. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. You guys know <laughs> what I'm talking about there. Uh, no, we're both going to be pretty dark in this case mm -hmm. i we are both wearing some, a very dark outfit and my glasses will i am of course doing the signature glasses now because the poster it was used in so many of the freaking posters in the film festivals and people have got over criticizing you for that now oh they should the that's the best 15 dollars i've ever spent and people have got over criticizing the conference and saying it was never going to happen and it's robbie d trying to rip money off and they've got over criticizing the flatty awards and realize right. it's just a really fun non-scientific award show you know there's no, no scientific voting uh, and counting panel or anything it's just flat earthers saying to other flat earthers hey thumbs up good job here's yeah, more and we, we've refined it it's better it's better than yeah, last did, year it's better yeah. yeah it's gonna be really really cool and the um do we do we want to give away who's going to be handing out the trophies mm, mm. is it 100 percent? as far as i know Yes. Yeah, well, we'll we'll save we'll it. Wait, we'll save we'll it for wait. the next show. Yeah. We'll save okay. So, and that's it. That's the end of the the two days. And then on Saturday, there's a big social event, but that is not going to be announced here. And so, you guys will just have to come to the conference to find out what happens on Saturday. Because I'm not leaving till Sunday. I'm there for such a long period of time that. Yeah, you're you're there for a long time. I'm oh, there. I got to call my friends uh, in Boulder. That, I'm so uh, excited, and I've never been to Colorado before, so. Again, a lot of it comes down to the weather. I mean, it's it's nice, but it depends where bring, you would... Bring warm clothes if you're going, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Be prepared because it's no joke in November. It, it could snow just like that. At the drop of like, a flat earth hat. Drop of a flat earth hat. <laughs> Let's talk about real quick because we... we do, Did you have something else you want to bring up? No, I just want you to talk about the behind the curve, the two screens. Okay, okay. With. So And your mother went to them too. Who's uh, also... Yes. Uh, in the She's behind the curve documentary the movie uh, she signed the release forms <laughs> and yeah she's in it so what happened was we, you guys haven't followed what's happening the documentary which i know the flat earthers hate uh but the general popula populace populace think it's very very interesting has gotten a lot of traction lately so much so that i was even having a hard time keeping up 
uh, 18 festivals in five countries. And that's pretty good for a documentary about Flat Earth. And uh, so much so that they reached out and said, hey, you know, you thinking, can you come, you know, do do public appearances maybe and so yeah I would I initially went up to the Bellingham October in Bellingham Washington went to that one and I it was it, there were two showings up there one on Thursday and one on Sunday and so I went up and my mom hadn't seen the film yet because it's not in general release so I went and I saw it with her we snuck in the theater didn't tell anyone that we were there and then somebody spotted me at the end and I got out of there pretty quick but she loved it, you know, of course, because she's, you know, she's a flat earth cheerleader, but she knows, you know, enough about what happens behind the scenes that uh, she she knows that it's, it is what it is. It's a great snapshot of what happened in 2017, in my opinion. And I think it's a fantastic recruiting cool tool. I go home, turn around, immediately fly out to Hot Springs, Arkansas for the Hot Springs Festival, which was way bigger than the October thing and saw the showing there and did a q a afterwards so after you know afterwards they had an mc come up and uh, that's me and i took questions and fielded questions for a while and then kept doing questions in the lobby which was a lot of fun and then turned around got four hours of sleep got on a plane headed back to bellingham to meet the director and producer daniel and caroline and we we did not watch it in this case because like I already seen it a few times like okay so we went out to are dinner. you able to when you're watching it since you've seen it so many times just mouth the dialogue as you're watching the screen of everybody in it uh no no not not yet but but Caroline can uh, I caught I caught her doing it and that was that was kind of fun has so Daniel we, or Caroline as it's gone forward and they've seen it many times thought maybe we should have done that scene different maybe have they expressed to you any no because when you're making the film you can't base it on I mean of course you look at public reaction but it's uh, so far they've been vindicated I mean it's in 18 festivals and I'm going to rattle off the showings that are coming to a theater near you shortly and uh I don't think they have any regrets because it wasn't made for the flat earth community. Oh, of course we know that. Yeah, it was made for you know to to show people out on the streets what's happening in a in a in a part of the world that they don't know. You know, a a, a niche in so an ever growing niche in in social media that maybe they didn't know about. I wish it was done now as opposed to back then because we've grown as a community oh, so much, and of 20. course we've had successful tests that have happened when in 2017 we right. didn't have that many that were captured on film anyway uh, it, the the documentaries that will be shot this year and into next year will i'm sure be way more in depth and who knows how, how those are going to turn out remember the national geographic piece hasn't even come out yet this particular documentary spawns like for example without this documentary your CBS thing doesn't None happen. of these things would have probably happened that have yeah. been happening. Uh, Nat, Nat Geo was in because of this. CBS was in because of this. Other, uh, the documentary teams that are following, you know, these were the first guys on the dance floor. These are the first guys to pull the trigger. And uh, for everyone who doesn't know, nobody who was in behind the curve got paid to do anything. And we nope. don't get any money if this thing became, you know. Oh, yeah, that's the know, sad a must see part. movie and, and, on TV. That, that's Murphy's Law, of course. But and we didn't the, expect it to. We just, I mean, we did it because... Yeah, sure. You can follow me around during this pay, period of time and pay it. Pay it forward. We do. You know, you know yeah. me. It's like, look, it benefited. It's like any publicity is good publicity, and this thing has generated a whole lot of attention. So we, if like after the Bellingham con, uh, showing at the second one I went to on on Sunday with you know it was Daniel and Caroline and the MC and me upstage on stage. Nobody left. <laughs> Everyone that was in that audience and, and Flat Earth Fokker, if he's listening, he, he can verify it. Everyone just stayed there, just riveted. It's like, and they, you know, she, the, the MC was asking questions and all of a sudden, you know, any questions, just hands went up everywhere. And that's how it is. You know, okay, so anybody in the audience, did anybody in the audience say things like Flat Earthers are stupid? Nope. Or did anybody in the audience say, you're a flat earther, why would you allow yourself to be in a movie putting flat earth down like this? No, that was just this? that one guy in Toronto. And again, okay. I, I I can't so, yell at him because he was an impassioned fan yeah, of, sure, the, of the cause. Yeah, of course. So, so general reaction from John Q. Public and Jane Doe when they watch this is, interest right oh it's it's it is what you would expect which none is of it's hate every, or like these nope. people need to drink bleach and die nope 
Nope, nope, it never is. They all, well, of course, and, and because, mo okay, even if they did, and of course, like we lost, I think, half of the audience at Hot Springs. Half of the audience stayed for the Q&A and the other half left because if you can't say something nice, remember the rule face-to-face -face is if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all. And uh, Southern hospitality is not dead. And and they, you know, most people don't, which is why trolls get away with they can with what they can because oh, they're, yeah. they're being anonymous. These are th people that would get their asses handed to them on a regular basis if they said this stuff. And you know, if you went to a bar, let me throw just Red's rhetoric just for the heck of it. If Red's rhetoric threw out what he says in a bar. <laughs> He would be beaten with pool cues. And not the stuff that's pro NASA, just the harsh anger and right. nastiness. Right. Even even the scientists and psychologists and, and everybody else that was in that movie against us, even they were doing it with a smile because, look, you're on camera. You're not, you don't want to come off as this horrible person, right? Even if you said it, you know, you're, you're just like, don't use this, you know. Anyway, the point is, and you'll see this with every Q and A, and I, I will mention it because DITRH, as you know, is going to go to the New York showing along with Zulu One. They've no, already got their exciting. Yeah, and and you, if they do a Q and A, I don't think they do a Q. Well, actually, Daniel, the director, and Caroline may be there. I wonder. If oh, that should... would be so good if DITRH. DITRH, but DITRH isn't in the movie. It doesn't matter. He's an expert on all. Yeah, all he would things. be. I know. I know. You know what? I'll recommend it to him. I'll say, look. Yeah, and he can going. just answer questions in such a way that are so neutral that they, they, they're they not about race. They're not about um, specific beliefs and specific models. They're not about specific religions. They're very scientific, but yet common sense and easy to understand. He's He would be excellent. He would be excellent. The, the questions that always come, always, always in Q&A, they start off with, how does blank work? How do seasons work? <laughs> Or what how does about the sun work? seriously? It would be daylight does, all time, all the time. How does blank work? Or what about blank? That's mm -hmm. it's always one of those two. It's like what about this? Or in, and seriously, they just you know you know we've heard them all so many. They times. don't say things like why did you wear those blue glasses? You look like a fool and made the community think. No, you're no, no, no. By by they don't say things like no, no. What, because, what's up no, with that redhead and all those cats? She's a crazy cat lady. Those things that we got criticized for as flat earthers by some darker people in the flat earth community. Right. That stuff doesn't come up with the real people out there. They're interested in flat earth. What? They're interested what? in the concept. The I concept. Mean, they they yeah. watched it for a hundred minutes. You and I saw this. Let, let me end on this this part, and then we'll we'll go into the showings, which is you and I saw this at Toronto, where e even Daniel didn't realize. He's like, "Oh yeah, I'll announce you guys after the you know uh, after the movie." It's like, oh, "I think it's a good idea. Oh, it'll be fine." It's, but the second the people knew we were in the audience, the the questions to the director and the producers stopped because they just watched a flat earth movie for the first time and all they cared about was their flat earth questions the marble and the paint can and it's like you know how, how quick did we get a microphone like 60 seconds yeah it's like oh yeah you know, we're done we, with the q a there's real flat earthers here and then everyone just their heads swiveled and they just like looked yeah them. yeah it's like and then they were fascinated when once the once the the, the official q a was over they wouldn't let us go you know, we were just surrounded. And the same thing happened in Bellingham. The same thing happened in Hot Springs. Uh, same thing. They just followed me into the lobby. And I, there was this 12-year-old kid. I could not get rid of him. I had to banish him eventually. He was a <laughs> science kid. And I was like, we were just going back and forth. 12-year-old uh, boy. And then eventually, I, I, by the way, I promised him that if he wrote me, you get him on, his, on your show. And uh, he he was great. He was this cute kid. It was like you know, he had all these questions, and he just wouldn't. You could tell. And he goes, "No, marble's not in the paint can. It's not in my head." So I said, "Yeah, it is." Absolutely. What are you doing here? <laughs> yeah, wait, Why yeah. Are you asking me all these questions then. So I banished him, Lord of the Rings style. Um, but the same thing happened in Bellingham. They follow us. We closed the theater in in Bellingham, where people just would not leave the lobby. And you know, meanwhile, uh, Flat Earth Fokker is outside, you know, smoking a cigarette with some of the other Flat Earthers. And we had Flat Earthers, by the way, in both of those showings. And Daniel said he only went to one place, I don't know where it was, where there wasn't a Flat Earther in the audience. He That's said, crazy. Because there was always people. So let me rattle them off real quick, because eventually, okay. um, here are the showings that are yet to happen, that might happen in your area. Uh, the one in Salt Lake City, that was last night, that doesn't count. Uh, there's one at the American Film Festival in Poland that is 
tonight. The American Film Festival in Poland. It's wow. the American Film Festival in Poland. Go figure. Uh, Portland, Oregon. Portland Film Festival. That is happening. Ooh, that'll be a good one, Josh, from Oregon. I know you're not there, but yeah, that will be a very, probably, uh, open to Flat Earth and alternative concepts crowd. That's happening in 30 minutes. Oh, nice. <laughs> Uh, the one tomorrow, that's the 25th, that is also going to be another one in Poland. The 26th is going to be in Lake Placid, New York for the Lake Placid Festival. The 28th at Portland for the Portland Film Festival. So if you miss it today in 30 minutes, you can go back to the one that's on the 28th. And the last showing at the... at that's that's also the last showing at portland is the 28th november 3rd these are the big ones of course because uh, bob and cammy is going to be attending at least one of these i hope you guys go to more than one to be honest because you really should watch it more than once uh, i want to see it a third time it's you take out more every time you watch it i, I say hope that. it comes to houston eventually i think it will well it will but it's gonna probably give me general release because i think we're mm -hmm. running out of film festival season right, right. the november 3rd is going to be denver film festival november 4th is oh boy uh ontario canada at the Sol saint marie yep the same day it's also going to be in denver november 4th and the last showing in denver which is a full week before the conference is november 6th yeah i wanted to come in early enough to see that but then then i would have to stay so long in denver like incredibly long i'd run yeah. out of things to do probably yeah and and besides you've already seen it twice i know but yeah. i wanted to go and be supportive or answer any questions uh, you know it's going to be interesting again you know bob has a pretty big part in this so it's yeah. going to be interesting for for him and cammy and cammy's in it and yeah cammy's in it uh, oh my gosh Jaren so many people in jaren's in it is he no 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 the, no there's their son no no wait just jaren in jaren it. i don't know i don't i feel oh. i can't remember doesn't I can't matter remember either i don't know all right so uh the big one of course is going to be at the dock new york city festival that is going to be in new york new york november 10th 8 p.m. at the Cinepolis Chelsea. Mm, I like Chelsea, the Chelsea and area. Yeah, TRH is going to be going to that. Uh, then we jump to November 22nd. That, if you're in Estonia, which I believe is right next to Greece, uh, that is going to be at the Black Knights, Talon Black Knights Festival. That's going to be the 22nd and the 29th. What happens in Estonia stays in Estonia. Exactly. No, we're big in Estonia. Oh yeah, we yeah. are. Oh yeah, we are. That in fact, There's Estonia. There's a conspiracy got, magazine out I've of got, Estonia. I've got, yeah, an Estonian magazine, and from we're in it. Two from years like ago, 2015. Yeah, uh, and then the last one so far on the schedule is going to be back up in Ontario, Canada, at the Guelph Film Festival. That's G U E L P H. Mm -hmm. So there you go. These are all the ones I have yet to show, and there's. I'm and not then gonna, they're going to sell it to somebody or they've already yeah then then it gets hopefully general released to however yeah. they're going to distribute it but either way we'll we'll get a hold of it but every time it shows you know it just bring you know exposes an more angel more people. gets his or her wings we flat smack a lot during these things i mean i've seen it i've been to multiple ones now and it's always the same pattern people just get stunned you know just they have no idea. I mean, because there's minute. people These that people are real. They're looking at the screen. This is yeah. A, there's a bunch a of people real that documentary walk, that walk into the theater they have no idea what they're walking into. Yeah, like it's that like, sounds cool. Let's go see that, honey. Yeah, okay. Right. And by the time they're done, they're like, what? literally flat smacked. That doesn't mean they believe in flat Earth, but they've been <laughs> that. Yeah, they have. You know? they have. They absolutely. That kind of hurt, by the way. I am not going to touch it. <laughs> not going to do it. But hopefully that doesn't turn into a meme. You hitting yourself. Gosh, that would be bad. Um. Uh, um anyway, so that okay. there you go. The behind the curve doing very very well. Uh, what five countries? Canada, United States, Estonia, Poland. Oh crud! What was the fifth one? I don't remember. Um, I don't remember. Uh, oh, Australia. Oh, I didn't. Read we were it, we were in yesterday. Sydney. Oh, and, yes, correct, correct. Oh, sorry. Well, also let, in Mexico. Let, let, me, let me. It was in Mexico too. I yeah, think. it was. Sorry, let me rattle off real quick where how this thing started. Toronto, Canada, for three showings. Melbourne, Australia, for two. S Mexico, uh, back in August. Sydney, Australia. Calgary, 
Los Angeles, Calgary, Wichita, Bellingham, Wichita, Hot Springs, Bellingham. Cool. Each one of those. So was, what did your mother think? I know she's seen it, you know, but I mean, what did she, and she's in it. What did she think? Was she, I mean, I know she knows all about Flat Earth and she knows many of the people in Flat Earth. I've met right. her myself. Right. So she's kind of an insider, really. But did she did she enjoy it just as an experience? Forget about the fact that she's in it and her son's in it. She thought it was funnier than and and I admit, you know, you and I, you know, we're we've got a real biased look at it, of course. Oh yeah. But, Anything but, that kind of pokes fun at a flat earther. We are like, we cringe, but then if you just look at it as a piece of art or comedy, some of the stuff's kind of funny. It's, I, you know, I sat in back, Sight gags. Of, I sat in back, yeah, a back of two different audience, three, well, I was with three different audiences, one in Hot Springs, one in Toronto, one in Bellingham, and all the comedy beats were, they hit, mm -hmm. which was people thought, now, now part of it was disarming, you know, you get them to laugh a little bit, then you sneak in some stuff. You get them to laugh, lighten it up because you don't want to make it too serious. You don't want to make it too propaganda because otherwise they feel like they're being preached to. Uh, and yeah, of course, what we ran into, they laugh for like the first 20, 20, 30 minutes. And then all of a sudden it starts sinking in. It's like, like this is a real thing. Yeah, this isn't this isn't something where these aren't just yeah, initially, of course, they think everyone's crazy. And then they realize by the time they get to the 2017 conference, that's when it hits them. It's like, OK. This is this is not just and a few. They're all all these flat earthers are well spoken and right. they really they they don't seem like the living in the mom's basement kind. Well, no. some of us do, um, but <laughs> most of us don't. Um, there was an there was an other there was another element of humor, but not that like sight gag sort of humor, not as obvious. Right. Which is at one point in the movie, they go back and forth between a flat Earth meetup and a science meetup. But both of the meetups were similar in a way. Yeah, they were. They were there was so a which, science. Why, why is this the science meetup? Why is that correct? And the flat earth meetup is not correct. And that's, and that's an what interesting they were showing. thing to think five, about. Five blocks away from the Pasadena meetup, which I was at, the one of the leading science girls that was there, she was doing her science. It was just a science meetup. And they were talking about stuff. And flat earth did come up. Uh, but you could tell that the two were very, very separate and that, yeah, I mean, we weren't was, talking about them, but they were talking about us and they right. were saying, well, we just need to find better ways to teach them. To exactly. And that was never going to happen. You could tell that science was never going to reach out to us in a way that was going to be educational or, you know, neither side is going to walk out to the field and, and meet us. Yes, please in the tell middle. me more. Teach me how NASA's real. Show exactly. me the Hubble telescope and how it really works. Right. I mean, we've looked for that information. That's why we're here now. We've looked to try to find footage of the ISS actually being built in space, and we right. can't find it. So, right. sorry, <laughs> no, yeah. we're not. We're not going to meet people in the field halfway when it comes to believing in any of that stuff. No, I agree. Done. We have to wrap up so I can talk. Yes, to you we're done like because two minutes before I. Yeah. Well, this has been a lovely show. Thanks to everybody in the live chat. Please give the video a thumbs up. And if you uh, are watching it live, come back when the video makes its way from the live show where we are now to being recorded on YouTube and leave a comment because I've got so many people watching it live, about 200 or so, and then I don't get as many comments because you guys aren't going to come back and make a comment, but I encourage you to do so. And what is it that we should leave as a secret phrase? Do you have one in mind? Secret phrase, secret phrase, secret mm -hmm. phrase. Something we've spoke about today um, um, that would be interesting, that would be cool, that would be mm, fun. I can't think of anything funny that we've said at all. Black tie. How's that? Okay. That doesn't even relate. Uh, Maybe we should skip it since we can't come up with anything. Uh, I can't think of anything at the moment. All right. All right. Well. <laughs> no, no, no. You know what? You know what? Uh, we gotta come up with something. DOJ. Oh yes, DOJ, the, the the Nodell's dog. Yep. So that's just spelled D O G. So leave a comment about the Nodell's dog who passed. Uh, any comment at all? Just uh, R I P D O G would be good. Go. Want to say hi to Joey Rocha who's here in the live chat. Um, just very quickly here, and um. Also, uh, Mark Semaine, and I saw somebody else I wanted to say hi to. Oh, yeah, Nordy K. Knudsen, and um, everyone who's in the live chat. So come back and just leave a comment and and write, write D.O.G. in there somewhere. Cool. And hi to Christopher.
and goodbye to everyone. Thanks so much for being here, Mark. I will talk to you soon. All right. Hail Hydra, uh, Spectra, Spectre, and George Clooney. And, yeah, you know, keep Whatever. it flat and all keep that. Keep it flat. Yeah.